In this video, we're going to talk about working with files, um, at least for getting input. You can also write to files. We're not covering that here. So um, adding data to a spreadsheet, you can actually do it several ways. You can type it in piece by piece. You can read it from a file, which is what we're going to look like, or you can link to a database. We're not going to cover that. So um, here, we're again, we're talking about reading data from a file. Now, there are some standard data file formats that you can uh, read easily into Excel. We're going to focus on text files and ones that use comma-separated values. Now, this is a very common format, and many programs will let you produce a file of comma-separated values, um, all set to be read into Excel. And in fact, if you use a file extension .csv, Excel will open it, and it will look set up the data in the way you expect. Then you just need to save it as an Excel file. So um, the reason I'm focusing on text files is that a lot of the files that are produced by software products, like let's say by Word, have extra information in them that you may not be so aware of when you look at them visually, but it's there. So like in Word, there's information about the styles you're using, um, the font, the size, et cetera, et cetera, which is there in the file in a kind of invisible way and would get in the way of processing the file uh, using the kind of file processing methods we're talking about. So we're going to um, mostly talk about text files that have a CSV or a TXT extension. Now, in order to read data from a file, we use the input function, and there's several ways to do it. And I prepared a workbook for you called Input Demo, and it has different ways of reading from a file, and we're going to look at those one by one. So um, in any case, whatever you're doing, the first step is to open a file from re for reading, and Excel has a nice dialog box that lets you do that um, by browsing for the file and clicking on it, and this is what it looks like. So you set this to B. Your file name is get open file name. And you'll notice this is from the application. That means it's an Excel function, not a VBA function. OK, um, this little piece of code, if the user doesn't pick anything, it just cancels and jumps out of the subroutine. Otherwise, we open our file, whatever it is, for input access um, read as number one. Now what this does, it simply associates the number one with the file, and it lets you read from it, but not write to it. Then you do whatever you want, reading. We'll look at that code in a minute. And finally, you close the file using the same number that you assigned here. You can use any number you want here, and the reason for having the number is to let you have several files that your program is working with at once. So. Um, it's important to close files at the end of your program that you've opened. If you don't do that, Windows may take care of it for you, or you could end up with a corrupted file that you can't use anymore. So be sure to um, close them after they're opened. Now, one way to use input is to read a whole line from your file at a time. And that looks like this, the code. Uh, one line would be a string variable, and you write the line, line input number one, or whatever number you're using, one line. Over here, um, let's go to the Developer tab and to Visual Basic. I've got a version for each of these actually implemented here. And um, there's a bit of extra code in here, which I got off the web from Walkenbach, I believe. Uh, no, I got it from here. And I, I gave the... Um, reference where you can find this code. And here's where I'm opening my, uh, where I'm reading from my file. And you notice that it's due while we're not at the end of the file. So it's a while loop, and I'm going to keep reading until I've read every line in the file. And what I'm doing is, um, in order to show you what's going on, I'm using um, row by row. In the first cell, I'm putting the number of the row I'm working on. So I started with 1, and um, that'll be my first one, and then I'll put whatever was in that one line. 
increment row index, and I keep going like that. And finally, in the last uh, row, I print done so that I know things terminated properly. Then I adjust the column width to fit the data. Okay, so let's just see this in action. I'll go back to Excel, um, read whole line, and now I've got to find my file that I want to read, so it's over here. Um, uh, okay. And I've set up a file called, oops, the whole line file. And here it is. So I, I put some names of presidents in it, and there were five of them, and then the last thing it says is done. All right. So here on this slide, I'm showing you what the text looks like inside the file, and this just shows the output. Okay, next way, suppose I want to read a single item. Well, to read single items, they're separated by commas, and Excel is primed to expect comma delimited values or the end of a line. So here's what the code looks like, um, and here's what my input file looks like. So I've got the same basic information, but here I put commas in between each word. And if I come over here, let's clear the sheet and do read one item, and I'll pick the one item file, which is set up with this data, and here it is. So we read those 11 items, uh, because I used three for John Quincy Adams, and then on the 12th line I printed done. And you can see the actual code again over in Visual Basic if you want to look at it. And you can see this is the format for reading one item. The rest of the code is basically the same as it was for the last subroutine. Okay, and this slide just goes over this. Now you can read more than one item at a time if you want to. Uh, the only thing you have to be careful about is to have the right number of items. So if I'm reading two at a time and I do this over and over, I better have an even number of items or something will go wrong. So let's look at that one in action. If I go over here to Excel, I'll clear my sheet and do read two items. Um, that's this file. And here what I did was I put one item in the first column one well, column B and one in column C. I'm still using column A for my numbers. And after I did my items uh, in the sixth row, I put done. So you can see that here I left out Quincy so that I wouldn't end up with an odd number of items. If you do have an odd number of items, your program will terminate abnormally. And I'd suggest you prepare a file and try it so you can see what happens then. Um, okay, oh, actually, here I used our, our um, one item file, this should say. Uh, whoops, let's go back there. I'll fix that later. And um, you can see the word done didn't print because after it did this much, it terminated um, with an error. Okay. Now, you can also read characters, either one at a time or any number at a time. Um, the only problem with that is that things may uh, work in a way you don't expect because there are invisible characters, like the character that's the end of a line or the end of a file. So let's take a look at what happens here. Um, if I try reading characters, here's my file for that. Um, okay. And I want to read one character at a time to start with. So I forgot to clear the sheet. This was left from before. But you can see I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Uh, then I have some letters. And then I have lines 21, items 21 and 22. And then I get my done. So if I look over here, this is what the input file looks like as a text file. And it ends with a return which you can't see, but here it is. I, um, characters 21 and 22 actually are the carriage return and line feed that end uh, a line in a text file. Okay, now let's try, um, let's clear the sheet, and reading characters again, I'll pick that same file, 
But now let's read them two at a time. Okay, so here you can see um, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, A, B, C, D, etc., two at a time. And now item 11 here, which is invisible, is the carriage return and the line feed. Uh, things were normal because there's an even number of characters in the file. And so I terminated normally, and you can tell because it wrote done right here. So let's catch up on the slides here. All right, now what if I try four at a time? So let's clear the sheet, um, read in characters. I'm going to use the same file. But now I'll say four. All right, I, I'm coming along reading four characters, and then I had an abnormal termination, which you can tell because it didn't say done. And the reason is there were not... Um, the number of characters in the file is not a multiple of four, although it is a multiple of two. So it couldn't find four characters for its last read, and it terminated abnormally, which you don't want to have happen because then the rest of your macro, whatever you were hoping to do else besides read the characters, won't happen. Uh, you might be wondering why you would want to read characters one at a time or two at a time like that. Uh, sometimes you really do need to process your data at that level of detail, and in that case it's nice to know how to do it. Normally, though, comma-separated values or one line at a time is the way you're going to go. Um, so play around with this and try different things uh, till you're sure you understand it, and have fun.